Toy Spot, we're going to be having a look at DC Universe Classics Wave 1 Edrigan. The Demon Edrigan, actually. Um, as I mentioned, this is from Wave 1, and uh, they, they quote this as being Figure 4. I really don't see the relevance of it, because if you're going out looking for the Demon Edrigan, you probably don't care whether he's Figure 4 or not. Um, but really nice packaging. Not really a lot to be said with the packaging. One interesting thing to note is the fact that there is no real card to it. There is a back card, but the fact that the bubble is about the same size as the card um, is is really different than most figures. You know, most, most figures have that little extra little extra part at the top that gives you a title or, or what have you. Um, but on the back of the packaging, the other figures that are contained in this wave our Crime Stopper Batman, we've got Orion, Penguin, Demon, Edrigan, and Red Tornado. Um, you can collect all five to connect or collect and connect Rex Mason the Element Man, which is the figure in the middle here. Um, there's a read-up on the character. It says originally summoned from the pits of hell by the wizard Merlin to defend Camelot from the witch Morgan Le Fay. Edrigan in recent years has become a monster possessed by the soul of his human host, Jason Blood. He can transform between his demon and human forms only if a special incantation is read. Although adept in magic and sorcery, the demon Edrigan prefers to blast his opponents to cinders with his fire breath. It's also got statistics down below here. Uh, first appearance was demon number one, 1972. Real name, Edrigan, Jason Blood. Occupation is demonologist. Base of operations is hell. Imagine putting that on your resume. Base of operations. Hey, wh wh where do you reside from? Uh, hell. You got the job. Um, he also comes from Gotham City. Special abilities, superhuman physical attributes, proficient in magic and casting spells, can project hell fire from his mouth, extra sensory powers, regenerative healing factor, and immortality. Interesting as well that they put immortality at the end. It's kind of like, oh, in passing, oh, and in passing as well, uh, yeah, he can live forever. I don't know why we forgot to mention that earlier. Um, but there's the five figures in the wave, and there's the biography on Demon Endrigan. Um, what we'll do is we'll get this package open up, and we will get a closer look at the demon. So stay tuned, guys. Don't go anywhere. And I think for many, uh, many people find Edrigan to be a, a rather obscure character. Um, I don't think it was really... I think, I think most people got... the uh, found, I think, more out about this character when he appeared in the Justice League series um, back in, what, a couple years ago, actually. Um, both him and Morgan Le Fay were in that episode. And uh, I, I collected Batman comics when I was younger, I kind of still do here and there, and uh, I I think I had a couple of issues with Evergen in it, but again, for me, the character was rather obscure to me as well until uh, well until they they were in the Justice League episode. Uh, Edrigan was also in an episode of Batman: Brave and the Bold as well. So uh, it, it, interesting that uh, a character such as this has kind of come more out in the mainstream. And, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty neat looking character. He's a pretty neat character um, in the sense that, you know, very similar to Hulk, he can transform from being a human uh, into something else. Uh, of course, unlike Hulk, he doesn't need to get angry necessarily. He just needs to use his incanta incantation to turn into the demon. But uh, really nice detailing on him. Kind of reminds me of one of the characters from the cartoon Gargoyles. If anyone remembers Gargoyles from the, uh, what, mid-90s from Disney. Um, kind of reminds me of... Was it Bronx? No, Bronx was the... Was, was the was the dog kind of thing. Uh, Hudson? Okay, clearly I don't remember much about gargoyles, but uh, he definitely rem reminds me of... I mean, he does look like a gargoyle, kind of a gargoyle demon. Uh, nice detailing on the face. I like the paint application that they did on it. Um, 
I also like the fact that you get a lot of movement with the head too, which I think uh, I think DC Classics or DC Universe Classics really uh, really got better from DC Superheroes. DC Superheroes you couldn't really move the heads as much either, and it didn't help also that most of the figures were remolds from older series. Um, I also like the fact that despite the fact that his articulation is about the same as most DC Universe figures. Um, his mold isn't. I mean, he, he's much wider, he's much stockier than most DC Universe figures. I mean, certainly his torso, I think you can even see, I mean, his torso is quite a bit larger than most uh, DC Universe figures. Um, one also, a small touch too, which I like too, is the fact that uh, his, I think you can see that his ripped sleeve here are, is actually rubber, it's not just a piece of plastic. And it's not just one sculpt. I mean, it, it it feels like a separate piece, which is which is really nice. Um, I also like the fact that he's got this ripped cape, and a really wide cape too. I mean, nice a nice bright blue cape, and he's got all these little holes and tears and stuff on it. Um, in the way of his articulation, he has articulation in the arms. Um, he has a swivel in the bicep. He has a articulation point in the elbow. His wrist can rotate. Um, his hands are a rubbery. Which uh, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to hold anything, so I'm not too I'm not too uh, upset over the fact that his fingers are rubbery. Um, as I already mentioned, he's got lots of articulation in the head. He's got articulation in the torso, which is kind of cool because you can have the figure hunched over. I think more more appropriately for what kind of the kind of character he is. Um, he has articulation in the waist, um, in the leg. Um, he has it in the mid thigh. Yeah, one point in the knee, and also in the foot. Uh, really, really nice. I mean, it's uh, it's not it's not everybody's. I don't think it's not everybody's favorite character necessarily. And again, I'm surprised that they threw this into Wave One, as opposed to more of a uh, well-known character. But uh, it's nice to see characters such as Edrigan here uh, get 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 some lighting instead of uh, you know. You can only get so many Batman figures before it gets tiresome, but it's nice that they put a more obscure character in there. Um, he does come with uh, the hand of Rex Mason, the Element Man. Um, when I initially saw pictures of the Element Man together, I, I didn't like the fact that, and I didn't mention this during the Batman review, but I didn't like the fact that his hand uh, had a sculpt on it it just looked like he has too many parts like even his legs were like a base you couldn't just have the figure on its own um, I, I realized it with the Batman I didn't mention it actually during the review but the one good thing about the arms if I can actually get this out now is the fact that you can actually take this part off the hammer um, and you can have just a regular arm I prefer to have it just with the regular arm um, or maybe have one of his arms with you know, with that extension, but I think to have the legs like that and the arms, I think it's just kind of overkill. So uh, I didn't mention it again during the Batman review, but uh, I do like the fact that they give you that option. And I'm not even going to get in back in now, but uh, well, we'll uh, I'll leave it to the side for now. Um, is this worth a, f a figure worth picking up? Uh, I w not necessarily. Um, if you're a fan of Batman. Or Edrigan, or you know, if you've like like myself, if you've seen the Justice League cartoon, and you're you're a fan of the Brave and Bold, and you and you liked his appearance in those cartoons, and you're kind of thinking, oh, that's a neat looking character. Um, I would definitely say now's your time to kind of pick him up. Um, he's not too expensive. I would say the uh, first wave actually isn't too expensive on DC Universe, so you could probably get this guy for about ten to fifteen bucks, maybe on eBay, but. Uh, uh, a nice a nice little uh, figure. He definitely has his charm. Um, but there you have a toy spot on the Wave 1 DC Universe Classics. And this was Demon Edrigan. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Later.